Okay, let's take a look at this question, which involves us going through some transactions in using the allowance for bad debt method based on the ending accounts receivable balance. So we have these transactions that you see on the screen for 2019. Okay, we wrote off uncollectible account. We provided 110,000 of services on account. We provided 20,000 of services and collected cash. We then collected 92,000 cash from accounts receivable. We paid 28,000 of salaries. And then they tell us that uh, this company estimates that 9% of the ending accounts receivable balance will be uncollected. Okay, so let's go through these transactions using this horizontal model, right? So we're going to go through all of these events and show the impact on the various accounts. Okay, so we're going to start off with the balances. And uh, these balances are given to us on this problem, okay? So there's our balances. And then we go through the first transaction. And the first thing we do is we write off the uncollectible account for $690. Now what that does is it reduces accounts receivable, right? We're not going to collect the 690. We know who's it's, which customer it's for. And then we, um, we reduce the allowance account. Now, how do we know we, re you know, why am I showing us reducing as, as a negative amount? Because if you look at how they lay this out, they say accounts, assets, um, let me state this as best I can. Assets include cash and accounts receivable less allowances. So they're showing the allowance balance is a positive number. Therefore, we're going to reduce it, showing it as a negative number. So accounts receivable goes down. So does the allowance when we, um, when we write off an uncollectible account like we have here for $690. Okay, then we provide $110,000 of services on account. So accounts receivable goes up by 110,000 because on account means we're uh, providing the services to them now in exchange for their promise to pay in the future. So accounts receivable goes up by 110,000 and so does service revenue, which eventually makes its way to the balance sheet in retained earnings. Okay, transaction three says provided 20,000 of services and collected on cash. So now, Cash goes up by 20000 and we record service revenue. So that has no impact on accounts receivable or the allowance account. Transaction 4 says we collect 92000 of cash from accounts receivable. So cash goes up, accounts receivable goes down, right? We're merely replacing the asset accounts receivable with cash. We've collected the cash, so we have to reduce the accounts receivable balance. Then we pay 28000 for salaries. So... Cash goes down by 28000 and salaries expense goes up by 28000 But of course, expense increase in expenses reduces net income, and a reduction in net income reduces retained earnings. Okay, so that's why that shows up as a negative amount. And then on six, it says we adjusted the accounts to reflect uncollectible accounts expense for the year. And the company estimates that 9% of the ending accounts receivable balance will be uncollectible. All right, now that's the dollar amount, but let me shift the screen so that you can see how we came up with that. Okay, now the first thing I did is just list those transactions in Excel just so I could compute the balances. Okay, so you can see I'm doing this in Excel. And if we just sum what happened in accounts receivable, we know we've got a balance of 42310 and we have a current balance in the allowance account of 1560 before we make entry 6. Okay? All right. Now I've shifted the screen again. The uncollectible percentage is 9%. So if we take 9% times accounts receivable, we get $3,807.90. Now we want to round that to, uh, to whole dollars. So $3,808 is the balance required in the allowance account. 
Well, how do we get to 3008? We've got to say we need an additional expense. Let me hit the F2. So if I take the $3,808 minus the current balance, I know that I need to record, or we need to record, 2,248 of an additional expense. And then when we do that, you know, this is just proving the number, add the balance as it stands before entry six to the uncollectible accounts expense we need to make before we issue financial statements for the period. And that's how I get to the 3,808. So that entry there has to be made and that takes care of this problem. So I hope you found that to be helpful.